Welcome everybody here for Achievement Unlock, which is goal setting. And there's a lot of different things that we can talk about, so I want this to be more of a conversation than just me presenting slides. So if you have questions, just raise your hand and ask, and we'll go through it. So it's going to be probably about 50 minutes of slides. I try to finish early just in case there's someone in the room after us. But as for now, we'll get started. So I am Riftwing online, Riftwing Designs. And this was a panel that was made with my friend Flippy, who is at Willowa on Twitter. And we just kind of said, well, we've been doing all these things. Why don't we do a panel about doing the things we do? And so one of our examples is actually how we made the panel by using goal setting. So it really is, um, it's a kind of a love child of doing panels for so long. I've been presenting for about five years at different places. I do furry conventions, anime, video games, bronies. These are my little pony scene as well. So if there's ever any other conventions that you Think this would fit in? Give me a suggestion. I'd be glad to present if it fits my schedule. <laughs> I live around here in the DC area, but I do go to different places as well. And I also send a really corny motivational email once a month. So if you like what you hear today, I've got a sign up up here, and uh, you can get my monthly emails. Uh, this year we're doing a 12-month challenge where every month you get to do something different to learn about yourself. It's like introspection. Uh, what, what are you good at? What are you bad at? What's your favorite uh, character? What's your magic wand look like? So this month is what's your Patronus from Harry Potter look like? So different fun things and then also kind of personal things as well to kind of help you to define yourself. Because you really can't help others until you know who you are as well. And this is also part of it, right? So my goal was to say I'm going to do a monthly newsletter. This year my goal is to do these specific challenges and I have to do the challenges too. <laughs> So it keeps me on track, and maybe it'll help you guys too. So with that, let's get started. You can do it! Tell me all of you have at least passed the test, have you? Okay, good. So how did you pass the test? Study! Easy, right? Or is it? What do you have to study? How many chapters? How long does it take to read? Did you take notes? Can you find notes? Can you find someone that had the answers to the exam? Those are the kind of things that you have to do just to pass the test. Then you talk about school. So the funny thing about school is that they kind of set up these achievements, these goals for you. You have to succeed at every grade to go to the next grade. And by the time you graduate, you have done all of the coursework and all of the grades and all of a sudden, you're now an official educated adult. This didn't happen spontaneously. It took a lot of work. Public schools, private schools, they all have plans. And so the, when you think about goal setting, you have to think about how do you make your plans so that you can go from where you are right now to where you want to be? And what is it that you want to do? Some deep questions. And I hope that you can kind of think about something, whether it's something that you have done, something that you want to do, and kind of apply it to your own life. If you have an example that you want to share that we can brainstorm together, I'm glad to do that as well. So when you talk about goal setting, it needs commitment. You have to say, I'm going to do it. I'm not putting it off any longer. I'll get it done. It may take time. There may be times when you drop it and come back to it again, but you take time and that's the idea behind commitment. Patience. Everyone fails. It may be shameful to some. Some people don't like it when you fail, but trust me, <laughs> nobody's perfect. And the idea is that if you continue and you learn from your mistakes and your failures, it will continue to move you forward. One of my favorite motivational speakers said, and you may have heard this, I don't know, it's a, it's a meme in public speaking. The idea is, that if you're presenting and all of a sudden you fall on your face, if you get back up and step forward afterwards, you're still further than you were when you started. And after that, anybody who falls on stage, they compare to that guy. <laughs> but that's the idea. One step forward, even after you fall, will get you further than where you were. Understand that it will be difficult but also understand that there are other people out there as well. If you want to make a fursuit, there's a whole community of makers that can help you. And usually they're very excited to give you help, even if it's kind of competitive when you see them all next to each other and they're like, ooh, 
trust me, there are people that can help you as well. And then finally, obviously, it takes effort. Nothing is easy. Sometimes in school things seem easy or things come naturally or maybe you get a lot of compliments with your parents or those kind of people that are like, everything my child does is perfect. But then you get out in the real world and for me, I tried to learn Japanese, I tried. I'm still trying, but it's not easy. It doesn't come naturally. I took 10 years of Spanish and thought, oh, this is easy. Another foreign language, no problem. Very different to learn Japanese. But it's something that I still continue to try and learn. And it will take me probably a decade, right, to learn at least the basics. But I want to go to Japan, so in order to go to Japan and enjoy it, I need to speak Japanese. In order to speak Japanese, I need to take classes. In order to take classes, I need to figure out where, how much, when, maybe some YouTube courses, some books. And all of a sudden, you've got all these things stacking up, but my goal is to get to Tokyo. That's the way that goal setting works, is by figuring out what is it you want to do and working from there. Any questions with the basics? You're already set. All you need now is to figure out how to get there. Who doesn't want fame, glory, money, success, right? Even those people that are really rich, most of them have like the hashtag worked it, right? I got there because I put in my time, my effort, my money. I mean, yes, we know people have been born with silver spoons in their mouth, but for many people, they did have to work for it as well. And it looks like they just got it all, but you don't know the stories behind how they got there. Even the fact that some people are here at this convention was a lot of hard work, whether it was saving up money, traveling, having the funds to do all the things I want to do, for costumes, making the costumes, right? So I've got my little skeleton on today. I got my little skelly tail that I made. This is made out of clay. Each one of these bones handmade. They all have little joints and it's put on a wire. So this thing probably took about two weeks to make because of the drying. But it was fun. I knew it. I had the time to plan. I looked online for schematics of how to make knuckle bones for cattails. <laughs> so every little thing takes time and patience and it pays off in the end. But you have to get to that payoff first. So before we go into some examples, I just want to go over some ground rules. And before the ground rules, we've got this, which I think a lot of you may relate to. I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I need to advance the main quest, like a video game. But I need all these side quests, like getting cheese and going fishing, instead of going to the main quest, because I just don't feel like I'm at that level. Have you ever grounded in a video game just because you wanted to make sure you could beat the next boss? Yeah, or Pokemon, right? You just want to get them to the high level so it's easy. You still have to do the grinding. Yeah. So I do a lot of motivational panels. I will let you know that I want you to succeed, but I'm not going to be like, oh, it's easy, as we've already gone over. I'm not a trained professional. I would like to be a certified coach at some point, not the sports coach, but the kind that's the life coach and says, yeah, you can do it. But the funny thing about coaches versus counselors is that coaches tell you to figure it out. But you have all the keys, so I'll just say, well, have you tried this? Or what was it difficult? Can we get over this together? As opposed to a counselor who's like, you should sign up for this class. You should buy a better insurance. You know, those are the things that counselors do. Uh, coaches, on the other hand, help you to help yourself. And I would definitely recommend them as a first level if you're ever thinking about asking someone for help. Which I don't know if it's a ground rule, but it's always, always okay to ask for help. There's also no bad ideas. If you have a question, there's no stupid questions, all right? We're all friends. We're all here to enjoy some part of the furry fandom together, which I think is fantastic. And I do thank you again for taking time out of your day to be here. I think it's great. And no bullying, no teasing. We're going to laugh at some stupid jokes and some awkward times. But the idea is we've all been through challenges. And if we laugh, we're not laughing at you. We're probably laughing because we've been there, too. And yeah, it's interactive. I'm going to ask you to answer questions that I ask. And I'm going to ask you to ask me questions, which I'll then ask you to answer. How's that? Figuring it out? <laughs> Any other things that you would like to add to the rules? Awesome. This is me circa, 
oh gosh, 2006. <laughs> it's a perfect likeliness, right? So this is my first example of being out on my own. I just moved to Washington, D.C., my first job, and I'm going to go to Otakon, one of the biggest anime conventions on the East Coast. Have any of you been there? All right. It's kind of intimidating, kind of huge, and almost everyone is wearing some sort of nerd gear or costumes. And I said, I'm going to wear this costume from a girl that I liked on the website Gaia Online. I see some nuts, right? That was really big in the 2000s. <laughs> and so she was the shopkeep. And I was like, oh, this is great. You know, I've got the hair for it. Well, that's a wig. Uh, I love the outfit, the spank leather. So I made the pants, the jacket, the shirt. I made almost everything. But I did not set proper goals. So there was still the entire jacket to get done before con. And if any of you have had any sewing skills, Jackets are very difficult, especially with the collar and lapel. And <laughs> so I was working on it the night before. What do you think happened? It went perfectly. It went perfectly. I like that answer. Okay, so really what happened is I was sewing 2, 3 in the morning. I'm getting to the lining. There's this cute little patent leather and then the blue leopard lining. And at some point, I realized that the sewing needle on the machine was somehow in my finger. Oh. And I looked at it, and I went, I don't know if I should remove this needle. <laughs> I was so sleep deprived that I'm like, I just, I'm just looking at it. Okay, well, I don't think it's bone. <laughs> so I took it out, and I wrapped it up, and I was, just kept sewing. The next morning, I'm looking at it, and I thankfully had not seriously injured myself, but I was wearing this massive band-aid the whole time I was at con, a reminder to myself that that was the stupidest thing I've done in my adult life so far. And now for stupid adult things, that is not bad, right? Just a little boo-boo little on my finger. <laughs> it sounds worse than it felt, but it was not good. And I have never again stayed up until three in the morning finishing a costume. I have stayed up until midnight. But not three, because sleep is still important. So why do we wait until the last minute to do things? Procrastination, yeah. Why? Why do you procrastinate? It's addictive. It's addictive to wait. Why? Sure. How you're raised? Yeah. Because you can do side quests instead. You can do side quests, right? You still have to pack. You still have to eat. Oh, maybe there's a new movie out. You gotta get the next level in your video game. That's good. Anything else? Instant gratification. Instant gratification. Yeah. When you get things done, it feels good. But sometimes you can do other things instead. Put off the big stuff. You got something? Uh, because the, the main thing which really helps that uh, more intimidating than the side quests. Yeah. This is much more intimidating than all those little things I could be doing. Yeah. Thank you. I, I found that once I overcame that, I actually started doing the main thing. It just went on and on. Yeah. So that was my good one. I found that before I start the main thing, it always feels very intimidating. I like what you said. So when you get going on the main thing, it starts to build momentum. But you have to get there first. Thank you. Yeah, very good. So the big problem is how to get there. So how do you get on that? That's what this panel is about. I love it. Any other comments? You guys are good. So this is kind of what happened. How many of you have sacrificed sleep for something other than sleep, right? Video games in this example, sewing for my example, homework, studying, I don't know if any of you have kids, you name it. That's a sacrifice that's made often, and it's not a healthy sacrifice. One of the things that I challenge people the first month of my email challenge this year is, what is it you're spending time on during the day that you could cut back on to make time for sleep and also for something else? He said, if I only had the time, I would. For me, if I only had the time, I would play video games. I'm a gamer that hasn't gamed in like five years. Shameful. Shameful. I got my Nintendo patches on and everything. Look at this. I, so I decided 
to cut back on social media. Gasp. I'm spending so much time on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr. You got my business card. Who hasn't got my business card yet? Let me see. You, I know you have it. I'm on all these social medias. And so I said, you know what? Maybe I could cut back a little. So one of the interesting things about social media is that it triggers those same feel-good chemicals, like when you get that rush of an achievement. So when you get a like, or when you get a share, when you get a comment, you're like, ooh, I gotta go see what they're saying. Because it triggers the same chemicals in your brain that it does if you get something real done. And so you get this momentary high from those likes. But you're not getting things done, it's literally just getting someone's attention. And that's the problem with social media. There's all kinds of studies online you can read. It's addictive. It's literally a drug, but it's just a drug for your head. <laughs> so for me, turning off alerts so that I only see those notifications when I log in is very important, especially for like uh, Messenger and Twitter. Otherwise, you get all these things on your phone and you just keep looking. So instead, if I say in the morning and in the evening I will check my social media, I automatically save over an hour every day. And that hour, I could then spend at the end of the day to play my first game that I played in a very long time, Night in the Woods. I hear some Night in the Woods fans! So this game, it was recommended to me, it's a furry game, it's about this cat girl that had some problems in college and went home because she couldn't finish school. And she spent the whole game trying to figure out, she's back home, but home doesn't feel like home anymore. And I know some of you probably felt something like that, where you just don't belong. Very, very good game. It actually won a, uh, a number one indie award this year. Uh, and if you really like Night in the Woods, I'm actually doing a yoga session tomorrow morning with the music. So 11 a.m., somewhere near the gym. You got my card, follow me on Twitter, I'll post exactly where it is. But we're going to do some zen and possum springs yoga. It's going to be really fun. But that was the game that I decided I could play now that I had saved an hour. I still got my sleep. I still got my social media fixed, but I didn't have to do it all the time. Have any of you had to do something like that where you sacrifice or found out that you sacrificed too much time on it? Is there something you should be maybe cutting back on? The other thing you can do is if you're driving a lot, which I'm going to use as an example because in DC you're driving or you're stuck in traffic a lot, <laughs> especially coming to a place like this. Find something productive to do when you're driving, whether it's listening to a podcast or an audio book. There are audio things you can do while you're driving that can, and you can do a class. Like there are, there are classes that are recorded. You can, you can do those as well. Um, nothing too distracting, but find something productive to do with your time in a vehicle or on a train. That way, it's not just listening to music or listening to the radio, which are nice and relaxing, and sometimes you just need to chill to some like heavy metal music to de-stress, right? But I recommend even those little things to help you to move forward and to continue growing. Any questions on that? All right, so we've kind of brought this one up already. Who has the time? If I had the time, I would do this. But sometimes you procrastinate. One important difference that I want to highlight is the difference between saying I can't, as in I physically cannot do a split. I physically cannot get down there and spread my legs and do some crazy gymnastics. I'm not that kind of yogi. But if I say I won't try and do a handstand, I am choosing that even though I know I can do a handstand, I'm not going to do it because I'm worried about falling which is very common when you start to do these crazy yogi balance things. So I can't do a split, my body won't let me. If I stretch a lot, maybe over time, I'll get flexible again, but you know, old bones and all that, right? <laughs> so when you have a task and you say, I can't do it, is that true? Can you not do that? Or are you saying you won't? You have chosen not to do it. That's a big difference. And a lot of times it's the won'ts and not the can'ts and prioritize it, which we talked about. Make time for it. Have the opportunity to realize you know something you should do and figure out where does that rank? Is it more important than my social media? Is it more important than my video games? 
Obviously work, sleep, health should come first, but then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you do. Any questions? I figured that when you're trying to appease someone, it's easier to say, I can't, uh, I won't. Right? Yes. So how is it that culture has made it so you have to say, I can't, even though you can, but you choose not to? Weird. Do any of you have an answer for that? Very interesting. People prefer to hear it. Right, they prefer to hear it. Yeah. It's, it's hard to say no in the first place. Yeah. And people sometimes don't respect it, which is why I've got that whole no means no thing going on, right? Yeah. Saying I can't versus I won't. Interesting. I feel like we could have some deep philosophical conversation on it. A good observation. Thank you. Anything else? So we have practice saying no. Yeah. To get over the. Uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say no, especially to like friends and family. And there actually are like, you can look online, there's like motivational videos on how to say no, you know, say no politely, say no, not so politely. Um, excuses, right? Oh, not, not right now. I mean, how many of you have seen a panhandler that's asking for money and you're like, oh, sorry, right? I mean, are you really sorry? Do you really not have money? Okay, a lot of people don't carry cash anymore, which is true. But <laughs> this one girl, she, she broke my heart. She said, you know, I know you got cards. There's an ATM around the corner. Can't you help me out, you know? And that's the kind of thing where it's like, yeah, that's what they're thinking. And there's a lot of people that say they can't, but it's tough. It's a tough world. Yeah. All right. Farming. How many of you know much about growing plants and farming? No one. Okay. Well, that means you're the stucky. Can you grow a field of corn overnight? You're like, what? <laughs> No, not in real life. In Farmville, yeah. But when you think about it, in order to grow crops, you need to have the field, you need to make sure the field is fertilized, you need to have the seed, you need to make sure that the seed is planted at the right time, it gets enough sun, enough water, enough time. Without all of those things, you will not have a productive crop. It's the same for your brain, you guys. You need to have fertilizer. <laughs> Food. You need to have water. You need to have sunlight. Yeah, otherwise you die of vitamin D deficiency. You need to be able to have time to cultivate in your mind what you want and what you want to do. And it takes time. So you can't, well you shouldn't, cram for an exam overnight as we mentioned at the beginning. A lot of things like making costumes you can't do overnight. So, again, we're getting to the same thing, right? It involves making changes. But once you know how to make these prioritizations, it gets easy. So we're going to start turning into solution space now. I think you all understand the problem is we just like to put stuff off, right? OK. So one example, these are our duct tape artwork, right? Flippy, who helped me make these slides, said, you know what? I'm not an artist, but I do like to do things, so I'm going to do one duct tape artwork a night for a month. And by the end of the month, he had all these different My Little Pony duct tape artworks, and I think there's a Mass Effect 3 logo down there. And he made duct tape wallets, and then he made duct tape like gifts for everyone for Christmas. Who's already planning Christmas gifts? All right, guys, now's the time. I'm sorry to say it, which is funny, because I got my skelly, so everybody's like, ooh, is it Halloween already? I'm like, when is it not Halloween? Christmas, on the other hand, I know there are some people that say that, but it's never too early to start getting Christmas gifts because then you don't have that last minute rush. And how many people have bought a gift on Christmas Eve? Okay. <laughs> Stressful question mark? Expensive question mark? All right. This is the idea, right? Plan. Make things if you're good at crafting or begin to buy things now. I have it really easy because half of my family is in Australia. In order for it to get to Australia by Christmas, you have to mail it before Thanksgiving. So I do everything before Thanksgiving and then I'm done. Easy, right? Yeah. Takes time, effort, commitment, and patience. I'm going to start quizzing you on those four things that we started the slides with. So first way to get things done is obviously deadlines. How many of you have done something at the last minute for a deadline? Yeah, most of us. If you have something personal you want to get done, have you set yourself a deadline? No? 
This is something I would recommend. What is it you want to do when you want to get it done by? And again, we're going to talk about breaking it into smaller parts. So what things do you need to get done to get to the bigger part? And how long should each part take? And again, missing the deadline is fine. As long as you acknowledge that you tried or that something that you thought was more important came up. And then stop and think and say, what did come up? What did I just do with the last week of my life? Well, how did I, where did the time go? I mean, we've all felt that way, right? What, what, what did I just, what day is it? Right? That was me. I was, admittedly, finishing my fursuit for the last three weeks. <laughs> Finishing and it took a lot longer obviously than I thought it was, but I was working 12-hour shifts So the time that I had off in between the shifts was maybe two or three hours a day But I did a little piece every day and yes I did have to spend four hours the night before the con to finish it But I had blocked off enough time that it wasn't actually that sleep time that I talked about with the sleep deprivation cosplay fiasco So make your own deadlines Obviously, things like a convention are going to be very important. A uh, test is going to be very important. But, you know, do you want something done for Christmas? Do you want something done for your birthday? Do you have something that you're going to? Or is it simply, I want to beat one video game a month? Now, some games we know have like 5,000 hours of gameplay. And that's not, um, that's not really good. I, uh, again, bad gamer. I still have to play Mass Effect 3. I beat 1 and 2, though. So those are the kind of things where I'm like, I know 3 is going to take a very long time, and I know I need to have everything else off my plate so I can just kind of jump in and binge it, right? That's the plan. And then, of course, all these games are coming out of the Switch, and I am sorry, I have to get one for some of these new games, right? So how am I going to get all of this stuff that I have lined up done before the new games come out? Or am I going to be late to the party again? Very sad face. But that's my own decision. And I'm acknowledging that that is my decision. And that I'm going to be prioritizing something else over playing the new Pokemon on the Switch. So, yeah. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you should set a deadline for? That's the plan. Does anyone want to share right now or should we keep going? Okay. An album. What do you do with this album? Is it music? Yeah, music rap. Rap. Ooh. How far are you? Two songs. How many are in the album? It's going to be. Did you say twelve, sir? Yes. Twelve songs, and he's got two done. Good. Good job. You've started. Do you have plans? Do you, do you know all of the other ten? I've got ideas for a few. Yeah. Yeah. So you know how many you want. You know you still need some music. Do you know when you want this album to drop? Yes. When? Next June. Next June. Is that reasonable? If I actually put the work in here. <laughs> That's what I want to hear, right? Put the work in. Make it work. So if you need to do next June, so that's one track a month, right? A little more than that. And you got, you know, the rendering, the finishing, and all that. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. I wish you luck. Yeah, it sounds great right now. Whole month. And then all of a sudden you're like, dang, it's November already. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing. All right, round of applause. Good luck. Anything else? Okay. You get an opportunity later. We've got another 20 minutes or so. That was Flippy putting that in there. He is, was still in school when we started doing this, and he's like, no. You're, well, sometimes it's okay to cram at the last minute because you remember it, but then if it's not the final, you're still going to have to actually remember it. Okay, I'm old. I'm putting a Get Smart reference in. There are maybe one or two of you in the audience that understand that. Yes, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, so these are some spies, and it's just a punny title. The idea is if you do these things to set those goals, it will help you. And you can actually Google it. There's a whole bunch of articles on smart goal setting. So to make a goal, it has to be specific. I want to have an album drop in next June. Measurable. How do I get there? I need to have 12 tracks. Achievable. I got a whole year. Easy, right? Realistic? Right now it's realistic. 
Time-based, yes, and you've got that time element. So whether you say, I can do two tracks this month or one per month, I still want it done by June. So that's actually a fantastic, smart goal, but now you have to keep to it. Does that make sense, how to do smart? Okay. Anyone need a picture on it? All right. So, anyone in Magic the Gathering? Okay, oh, that's actually like a third of the audience. So, have you heard of Neil before? Neil Oliver, our former Pro Tour Grand Prix winner in Vegas. And that's his trophy from 2013. Really, really nice guy. Runs a podcast, does a lot of really cool things. Um, he actually got into magic as a side gig because he was still in school and he was doing a lot of, uh, what is it? It's not coaching. It's a uh, when you teach someone else tutoring. I have not gone to school in a while. So he was a tutor and he was trying to figure out how to get to school. And he said, you know what? I actually got rejected from the school I wanted to go to. And I was really down about it, but then I realized that gives me a year. I might as well see if I can get sponsored by a magic shop and play this card game. And he practiced so much that he was able to get good enough to compete and then win. So what did he do? He said, figure out what your dream is. What is it you want to get done? For him, it didn't start as being a grand champion of Magic the Gathering. But that's what he got to. Plan those steps to reach the dream. How long will it take? Use those smart goals. Did I not say patience at the beginning? And be flexible. So when you have setbacks, understand that everyone has setbacks. That failure is a part of moving forward. As I said, when you fall down, get up and move a step forward. Take bad things as opportunities to improve instead of getting down and saying, oh, if I only did better, if only this was working out, I'm just horrible at this, I should just give up. Negative thoughts, we all have, but they also have a place, and that is to acknowledge them and then to move on. And I personally have had a lot of problems with negative talk and saying, oh, I'm just not good enough, I can't believe I'm doing this, why am I here? And it took me years to kind of get out of that mindset and to think forward. So if you have similar thoughts, look online for positive self-talk. That is thinking of ways to think about it more positively, and you literally have to train your brain to go, instead of saying, I'm not good enough, say, I should get better, and that, you know, that was a good try. It wasn't the best, but at least I did it. At least I showed up. At least I went and I presented this panel, and it will not be perfect, but I will learn that I will do it again next time. That's positive self-talk. An example I used yesterday, I know a few of you were at my panels yesterday, is that I, uh, as a yogi, went to a class and there were these girls that were goofing off in the front and they were not really good at yoga. And I'm all here like, it needs to be perfect, I need to be a really good role model in yoga and what are they doing? Ruining, quote unquote, this class. And then I realized I was having these thoughts, these negative thoughts about these people that were sharing this practice with me. And yoga is all about working together and acknowledging that people are taking time out of their day to do this together. And so I had to step back and say, you know what? I'm having these negative thoughts that don't belong in my head. I need to let go of this negativity and understand, yes, they may not be taking it as serious as I think they should, but they are learning. They are learning and I need to accept that. And that I should not be saying these bad things in my head because if I said them to them, they wouldn't be happy. Even though they'll never know that I felt that way, I felt that I recognized my own negative trait coming out. And while it wasn't saying I was bad, it was saying they were bad, I'm still acknowledging that you should never be, I believe you should never be mean to anyone, whether it's in your head or verbally. So it's important to me to realize that I still have room to grow. So whenever you have bad things, take that instead of getting down and saying, why did I think that way? Why did I ruin my own practice? Instead of being zen, I was angry, you know? So I had to kind of draw myself back in during the class to finish on a pretty high note. I was still just a little bitter and it actually took me overnight to kind of get it out of my system, but I acknowledged I had those feelings and I decided to improve. Instead of letting it haunt me, Ooh, yoga problems, right? It's a small example, but it's something that you have to realize in yourself. And always adjust, pivot, and find direction. 
you will always find that something, if you fail and you really just can't go forward, like it just did not work, you don't have the time, you don't have the money, it was a failure, your interests have changed. Go that new direction. Maybe now instead of playing magic, you're going to play uh, Hearthstone online, right? There's all these options. Never feel bad about moving somewhere else because usually you're always moving forward. Any questions on that? Yes? So, I just think we can find directions. I noticed I had a lot of personal ideas that felt really cool, resulting in a trail of half-finished projects. Mm -hmm. A few of which I've come back to, but I feel there are a lot that I've just left along the way that I do still feel kind of bad about. Yeah, half-finished product pro projects that you kind of leave and move on. I have many of those as well. Something that you started or something that you said would be nice to finish. Yeah, so how does that make you feel? Kind of bad. I feel like I should come back, but the interest isn't there, and I don't want to put. I don't want to put too much effort into a project I don't feel like. Oh, so you feel bad. You feel guilty. A little bit. Maybe a little guilty, but you don't have that passion that you used to for the project. Yeah. That's an interesting one. I mean, you could finish it just to get that um, achievement of having it be done. Yeah. It really depends on if it's something that you think. Um, if, whether it has a physical display, like if you are making something and you can show it at the end, or if it's something more mental that you think it'd be good to finish. You really have to weigh those pros versus the cons. If it's taxing, I don't think that it would be a big use of your time. Yeah. Now, specifics, I, I don't know, but those are the questions that it's worth asking yourself. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Yeah? I would add to it, like, if it feels like it's weighing down on you, that would actually hinder other projects going forward. Um, and some things I've read, it, it might actually be more beneficial to kind of just think that project. Like, just even the verbal thank you for that time in my life where yeah. I've had that experience, it's given me a lot of fun, but I moved on and I, I, I'm comfortable where it was and I, I can now do these new things. It, 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 that verbal thank you kind of lifts a weight off your shoulders so you don't have that guilt anymore. Because that, that guilt can be a big uh, block in, in doing more. And, and we want to keep forward, like, yeah. like, like you say. So we don't want to focus too much on the past, even though like we, we are gratified by it. Um, it should help us down. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Other comments? Okay, good. Good conversation. Find joy in every day as you go along the way. And it'll make life a whole lot easier. It's like Neil knew what you're thinking. Find joy. Try to find something that makes you happy. For me, playing that little bit of a game at the end of the day was really nice. And I need to do another game soon. That's actually kind of my goal next month. Now that the conventions are out of the way. Because presenting panels, it does take a little bit of work as well. So that was kind of my last three months. I did BronyCon, Oticon, and now FAU. So I will be able to move forward again. But that's the kind of thing where it's like, yes, it was a lot of work to do the cons, but I love it. I love presenting to you guys. I love the conversations. I love sharing. So it's not a bad thing, but it's a time-consuming thing. Yeah. So what is it that you have that you want to find joy in? What is it that you want to have as a dream? How do you get there? This is how I get there. This is Twilight Spiracle from My Little Pony. I am a listaholic. I admit it. Are there any other fellow listaholics in the room? Okay, good, good. So how do you become a listaholic? Well, you make a list of all your goals. You say, this is what I want. So first you have to say, what is that dream? I like to write it down. Um, there are studies online that say, if you write it down every day on a new sheet of paper and repeat it, it helps to ingrain it in your mind. Um, that's also kind of the term self-affirmations. So saying, I am strong, I am, brave, I am outgoing, I am successful. You say it in the mirror to yourself every morning, and apparently it's supposed to help make you believe it. Uh, if you're okay with talking to yourself, that's fine. I know I do sometimes, but I don't talk to myself in the mirror. Uh, <laughs> so self-affirmations are one way that people try and build up to be what they want to become. So you could say, I am a successful presenter. Now when I started, I definitely was super nervous and would never be able to say that to myself, but now I can but I could have used those self-affirmations. I didn't, instead I used lists. And I said, I need to have this done for all three conventions. I need to get 
all my panels done, I need to get all my costumes done, I need to advertise on social media. Again, you've all got my card, except for you. Anyone else I missed? All right. So I got all the social media things that I'm advertising, so I had a way to get through it by making this of my goals. And again, you break it down into pieces. What is it that will get you to finish the project? Make it every day or every week. So right now I do weekly lists. Every single week, I say, these are the projects. The best part about lists is when you have that piece of paper and you strike something off. That's that momentary high, right? So the smaller pieces you can make, the more you get to check stuff off the list and you really feel successful. So I highly encourage it. Now, I've said this at other panels. There will be days where the only thing you have to check off your list is getting out of bed. If you're having a bad day, Check that one off. That's the only thing you need to do. And maybe eat and drink some water and take your meds. That's all you need to do some days. But other days, maybe you can get more done. And it's important to acknowledge that not every day we'll have the same goals. And that not every day you'll be able to get things done because things crop up. Stuff happens, right? But if you have a list and you rewrite that list every day or every week, it keeps in mind what you want to get done. And you can add to it as you get things done. Or you can put new things on it if something else becomes more of a priority. And that way you can mark things off as you go on. So I highly recommend lists. There are also apps, I think it's another slide after this, but there are apps that can help you with that as well. As I mentioned, be flexible. Understand that not every day is going to be the same. Stay positive. Right? We talked about this. So don't be negative. Don't talk down yourself. Learn from your failures. Stuff happens. And there's always something that you can take away from the lessons that you learn. Everything happens for a reason. You're all here for a reason. We all love you. And you are worth it. That's hard to hear sometimes, but it's true. Every single one of you has a reason to be here. And you're all worth it. And you all should get to your dreams. Okay? So here's the apps, right? Who uses apps to keep track of stuff they do? Okay, what app do you use? Evernote. Evernote. Anyone else use Evernote? Yeah? Okay. Anything else? One over in the back? Uh, I use it to keep track of my medicine and moods and stuff. Okay, medicine, moods, health diary. Thank you. Anything else over here? I only use the Google Apps. Yeah, Google Apps. It's for, it's for to do list. Yes, to do list. Great. Uh-uh. 
This happened to the guy who helped put it together. He, he was actually doing almost a year and a half worth of German, and he freaked out because there was a thing he was busy one weekend doing. It was like moving or something, and he was worried he almost lost his street, but thankfully, because he had saved up enough of that currency to keep that street on hold, he managed to save it. But right. like, that, that would suck to lose that much progress. It's it's an achievement, right? Yeah. That's the name of the panel, right? You don't want to lose this amazing prestige. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So that's the idea behind Duolingo. Uh, Habitica is another app that you can use to set up. It's like a game, so it's like a RPG where you get achievements for doing things that you tell it you want to do. Keep is on Android and iPhone now. It's a Google brand, so you can tie it to your other Google things, and it's like got its reminders and things like that. And My Fitness Pal is another one. If you want to get more fit, you can use that to track. Um, the same for the, the medications, right? So there are apps that you can use to keep track of moods. Um, my husband has migraines, and so they always tell him, keep a journal of things that you eat, and things that you do, and when you get migraines, and so if you don't keep track of the days you don't have symptoms. How are you going to know if something triggered to give you the symptoms? So that's the kind of thing you have to think about. Again, you have to invest the time to keep those down. Do you have a comment? I also want to mention if you don't like apps, bullet journaling is amazing for paper and pencil. Yeah. And it also allows you to doodle and make moves. So if you're creative type, it really is nice. Yeah. Journals are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Also, buying journals is like one of those things that you get that momentary high, but then you have to fill in the journal. <laughs> I have filled in three this year. Oh, wow. So bullet journaling, look it up. It's a huge movement all over the internet right now for stay-at-home moms, unfortunately. I'm not sure write this down. I'm going to put that in my panel for it's next time. awesome. Bullet journaling. She's the one I was taking the notes for. <laughs> yep. Thank you. And um, then there's things like NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month. The entire month of November, you're meant to write a 50,000 word novel in one month. That's your SMART goals, right? So specific, you're going to write a novel. Measurable, it's going to be 50,000 words. Achievable, well, I hope it, I mean, you can do it. Obviously, people get it done in like two days, but they don't like sleep. <laughs> S-M-A-R, realistic, yeah. And T, you got the time? One month. Inktober, any artists? In the month of October, Inktober, you do one sketch every day, and it's based off a prompt. You can, you can do it in anything, watercolors, digital, ink. The idea is everybody does the same prompt every day through October, and you use the hashtag, and then you find all kinds of cool art. You try different things, and it makes you stretch. And then um, artist training grounds. That there's different places that have all year round, every day, there's a training ground and it'll give you a prompt. Is there anything else that you guys have used that are kind of like these, where it's a, a group effort to do something every day? Okay. Uh, not, well, it wasn't an app, so I don't know if that really, didn't really counts, but there was this little writing group that I was in and we'd have a word for a little week and we'd write a story for every chair. Okay, yeah, so a group that just had a weekly work. Another thing that we have, and I'm pointing to Newsome, we have a crafty Facebook page. And we're supposed to post every Wednesday oh. on something you did. It used to be on Wednesday you did the craft. You had to take time out to do the craft. And it's kind of stretched into a, what have you done this week? Do something this week. And sometimes we forget to post. Like, I don't think we had one this week. Yeah, I'm going to post my mask though, so yeah, sometimes we miss the deadline, but again, remember, missing deadlines is not bad, as long as you remember to remember you forgot. We were very encouraging of all kinds of crafts, like we're into something as simple as uh, fabric or something that's creative, as good as foods. So. Yeah, baking, uh, door decorating, especially around the holidays. Um, even things like, you know, grooming your pet's nails, like, we don't care if you think it counts, it counts. But you have to be in charge of your own goal for the week. Yeah, groups uh, are really cool like that. Okay, cool. Let's see what time we got. Perfect. So with that, I think I'm going to open it up for any other questions. Let's see if we got anything good. Oh yeah. You heard this quote? Just a little. Ten thousand kicks once means that you're really good at that one kick. But if you do 
one uh, 10,000 different kicks, you know a lot of different things, but you're not going to be as effective. So practice. 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 Uh, we're going to talk about how we made the panel, but honestly, that's fine. Uh, we talked about mental goal visualization and affirmations already. Goals should be big. They shouldn't scare you. You don't. While you can make those little goals that say, yeah, I got out of bed, yeah, I had three square meals, yeah, I took a shower, which are all important things, if you really want them on your list, please do. But at the same time, think about things that are meant to be something you haven't done before. Is there a club or a group or something else that you can meet new people and learn new things? For me, that challenge, I'm a crafter, is learning um, Warbler, which is this uh, heat armor and you heat it up and it's a thermal plastic and it melts into like you can make a mask like this out of just plastic and all you need is a heat gun and a lot of patience and try not to burn yourself and it's very very beautiful costumes i have some warble i do not have a heat gun yet so what is the next step for me <laughs> researching heat guns purchasing heat gun purchasing a uh, piece of marbles that i don't burn my floor in the little steps but try something new and find a group that will help you with that. Message people that do things that you would like to learn to do. Unless they're super famous, they may actually reply to you. Like, people are people, and if you say you're interested, ask them about their craft or ask them about, you know, their musicians. Say, hey, could you give me some tips? Is there something you would recommend? Is there a book you would recommend? There are a lot of people that will recommend if you just ask. Don't be afraid. Famous people are people too. So think about what you want to do. In the words of Gazelle, try everything. One of my favorite songs. And I know you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Best me ever. Right? Do it! Come on, guys. So I hope with this panel you have now gotten some tips on goal setting. Again, if you want to sign up for my motivational email, it's up here. I do them once a month. I do not share your information with anyone. I ask for your name or nickname, email, and state, because I do different conventions. I'd love to share those with you as well. And with that, are there any last questions? Okay, you guys have been great. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a fun time, all right? And if you want a uh, gateway to furry, how I became a furry, over there in room A at 4 o'clock. Oh, yeah. switching. Yeah. And then yoga, 11 a.m., somewhere near the fitness center tomorrow morning. <laughs> I love my gloves. All right, guys, thank you.